Well, the Prime Minister, Stephen Harper, has announced he will seek permission to prorogue Parliament. There will be a new throne speech in the fall, obviously. Uh, the House will be prorogued in anticipation of that. Uh, we will come back uh, in October is our uh, uh, tentative timing. Now, if successful, this would mark the third time the Prime Minister has prorogued Parliament. To comment on this, we're joined by two members of the opposition, Hetty Fry, the Liberal MP for Vancouver Centre, and Libby Davies, the NDP representative for Vancouver East. Good morning. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Rick. Uh, Hetty, let me start with you. Are you surprised to hear the Prime Minister is seeking permission to prorogue once again? No, I'm not. I think the Prime Minister... Uh has, is proroguing because, as he said, which is a pretty valid reason to, to prorogue, he's, he's finished whatever he set out to do. He's now going to set out a new course. However, the big question about this is he's had all summer to chart his new course. Why does he have to um, postpone the opening of Parliament? He should have done this all during the summer, prepared his new plan, uh, prorogued, went straight back in in September, and, and made a speech from the throne and said what he planned to do. So basically, I think he doesn't want to come back because he's got to face the music on all of the issues about Wallen Gate and Duffy Gate and, and $90,000 $90, It was given away by his chief of staff, all of that kind of stuff, you know, robocalls uh, coming from uh, conservative lists. These are things that the opposition are going to be throwing at him, uh, and, uh, and I think he doesn't really want to do that. Libby Davies, what's your reaction to this decision? Well, Rick, as you pointed out, this is the third time that uh, Stephen Harper has prorogued Parliament, um, and I think we have to take note that the House of Commons is the one place where the government has to respond to questions, and of course now he's shut it down. Um, so I think this is about avoidance, it is about trying to escape accountability. Um, since the uh, Duffy Wallen expense scandal exploded in May, um, the Prime Minister showed up in question period only five times. I'm sure sure people remember when Thomas Mulcair took him on and demanded answers, which he's not ever properly given. Um, so I do think this is about um, trying to escape from public scrutiny. We've heard very little from Stephen Harper over the summer. Um, in fact, you know, this is the first we've heard from him in over about a month. Um, so, it, you know, I, I think it's very unfortunate that uh, Parliament is yet again prorogued. But, but, um, I don't think it's about their legislative agenda. I think it's about their defense. Uh, that they want to escape public scrutiny. And the fact is we should be back at work in Ottawa. We were scheduled to go back on September 16th, and that's where we should be. But he is not playing outside the rules. The use of proroguing is well within prime ministerial power. That's so right. isn't, this a, isn't this move just really good governance from a conservative perspective? Well, I think motive, though, is, uh, <laughs> is very critical. Um, yes, prorogation is something that is within the parliamentary uh, precinct and procedure. But, but the motivation for doing so is something that one has to examine and, and, and see whether it's based on sound public policy or whether it's being uh, put forward and and, and unilaterally decided because of a, a purely political partisan reason. And I would say the three times that Stephen Harper, well, twice and now the third time coming up that he's proroguing the House is because of his own agenda, because of his own defensiveness. Um, it's, uh, you know, he's, 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 he, he's not someone who likes to be in the House of Commons and face the scrutiny of the official opposition and the Canadian public. Hedy, and I think that's what's going on here. Hedy, if successful, this would be the third time that Mr. Harper has asked Parliament to be prorogued. Now, he did face criticism back in 2000. 2008, he disbanded Parliament then uh, because he didn't want to face the potential coalition government. So, in your opinion, is there any justifiable times when a prime minister, whoever he or she may be, prorogues Parliament? Yes, uh, I think if a prime minister went in with a, a government and set a, a, a path that he was going to bring about either legislative or policy-wise, and he's finished all the things that he said he was going to do, um, he could prorogue, uh, prepare a new agenda for what he wants to do in the next few years of his government, and then present that in a speech from the throne. That's been done. That, that is a reason for proroguing. However, I think, as we have said, we think that this prime minister doesn't want to face a lot of the music that he has to face about robocalls, about, uh, about all of the things he's done. But let's just quickly talk about his agenda. This is a prime minister who has had no vision for the country. 
uh, he has done very little. His agenda was very, very small and very, very visionless in the first place. So he has brought in a lot of bills that that have to do with, uh, well, first and foremost, his his, his massive omnibus bills that he in which he's put everything with a kitchen sink into into uh, into, not allowing any of Parliament to take any role in changing that in in amending it. He's ignored all amendments. But the point is, if you look at what the Auditor General has said about him during his massive term of office recently in a majority government is that he hasn't had he's had absolutely no plan for search and rescue in the country this is a massive country with with three three oceans or three seas around it he has not had a search and rescue in fact he shut down the Kitsilano base secondly he has done very little legislation in terms of safety for Canadians in terms of food safety you look at uh, he is he should have been bringing in regulations he's been asked to by experts and by the help my health Canada to bring in regulations in terms of the amount of salt in food to bring in regulations Regulations with regard to trans fats. To look at look at the big scandals that we have had with with listerosis and at the scandals that we have had with uh, with the the Excel Foods meat. These this this he hasn't really done anything to serve Canadians. All he has done was to tell massive untruths about the amount of money he was going to spend on F 35s and to bring an agenda that was going to punish Canadians uh, massive ma- ma- maxim- uh, minimum maximum sentence. Or, uh, mandatory minimum sentences. He has brought in very, very uh, a punitive agenda with regard to crime and punishment. Now, but he's achieved very little that he could have achieved, and he is not doing anything. Uh, Ricky had an opportunity to take the 2004 Health Accord, run with it in 2006, look at a pharmacare strategy, look at health human resources, and to look at. at fulfilling the mandate of the accord, into which Paul Martin had put about $41.2 billion, signed it with the provinces. He has refused to meet with the premiers on health care. He has done nothing. Okay, Hedy, I want, to, I want to jump in here because I want to give equal time to Libby here as well. And, and Libby, one thing proroguing Parliament does is stop bills, which includes legislation on Senate reform. Now, you said that the Prime Minister wants to sort of hit the reset button and change channels to get away from the, the Senate scandal he's facing right now. The NDP has been very vocal in its calls to abolish the Senate. What's going to happen at Senate reform legislation, Libby Davies? Well, I mean, the Senate reform legislation um, on, the, on the government side has become a joke, Rick. I mean, they've promised now for years that they are going to bring in legislation, uh, and we've seen delay after delay after delay. And I think it, it really begins to question the credibility of, the, of Stephen Harper's word um, in terms of what, it, what he stands for. Uh, if you, we all remember when the Reform Party was elected and their, their calls for uh, reforms to the Senate. Um, so I, I think that one's now far down on his agenda. So I think their, their whole program's in a bit of a mess, frankly. Um, you know, yesterday the Canadian Medical Association released a very important uh, survey and report about health care for seniors. Um, you know, we want to talk about an issue that, that requires critical attention from the federal government uh, to have home care and long-term care. I mean, we're facing a, a big health issue here. Um, these are the kinds of issues that I'd like to see addressed, and I think that's what Canadians are thinking about. You know, he changed the pension plan. He raised the eligibility for old age pensions. So the, the, the priorities are all skewed. And, and I do think, again, that this um, message of propagation yesterday is really a defense. It's an avoidance. It's trying to escape accountability. Um, but at the end of the day, we will be back at some point. I mean, he says tentatively October, and who knows? It may even go into November. We don't know yet. Um, but, uh, you know, our job is to, is to hold this guy to account, and, and we still need some pretty straight answers about what happened with these uh, expenses in the Senate, what happened with this $90,000 check. Uh, those questions have not yet been answered by Stephen Harper. And we'll have to leave it there. I want to thank you both for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rick. Thanks very much, Rick. Hedy Fry, the Liberal Member of Parliament for Vancouver Centre, and Libby Davies, the NDP MP for Vancouver East. Now, we did invite a number of local Conservative MPs to take part in this conversation this morning, but all invitations were declined.